hello guys welcome to this youtube channel in this video we are going to be looking at the flip entry models of the smart money concept trading methodology in the previous video we looked at the chalk entry models in case you have not seen the video the link to the video is in the description section of this video so for a better understanding of what we are going to be looking at in this video i will recommend that you watch the chalk entry models video and hey guys if you're new to the YouTube channel and wish to learn about trading, then kindly click on the subscribe button to be part of this community. So let's head to the chart to actually look at the flip entry model as part of the entry model for the smart money concept trading methodology. Now, as you can see from the chart here, we have the market pushing to the upside. Now you can see price came back, rated our inducements, and then we actually have a valid higher low points created here and then price push to the upside and then we have a break in market structure because this is a valid higher high because this sponsored the move to the downside that took out this minor structure points so you can see price went further to the upside we have newly created higher high and then we have a newly created higher low points here this is actually our higher time frame point of interest and then this is actually our lower time frame market structure being formed. So you can see that when price came into the higher time frame point of interest, you can see we have price pushed to the downside and then we have price reacting at this demand point. For the chalk entry model, what you're going to see is that once price stepped into the POI zone, price drops to the downside and then breaks structure to the downside. This is actually the chalk entry model. But what we are looking at right now is actually the flip entry model where we have demand turn supply depending on the market word condition. Or we have supply turn into what's created demand depending on the market word condition. So you can see that is what differentiates the chalk entry models from the flip entry models. For the flip entry model, we have the change of supply to demand or demand to supply depending on the market condition. But for the chalk entry model, once price mitigates the higher time frame structure, and then we see the fall of price to the downside, and then price breaks the previous swing points, either swing high or swing low, depending on the market condition, then we actually have a chalk entry model. So let's look at this example to actually understand the flip entry model. So for the flip entry model, you can see price here mitigates the higher time frame point of interest. And then you can see price drop to the downside into this demand zone here. And then you can see now we have price return to the upside. But now what you can see is that price created a supply zone here and then price pushed to the downside and then broke the previous swing low points. So this leads to a word change in market word character. But you can see it is not actually when price mitigated a point of interest that we have a change in market character. Once price mitigated the point of interest, we have a drop to the downside and then price reacted to a sponsorship can do, resting at this swing low. And then price created a move to the upside and then price created a swing point here and then dropped to the downside and then broke the previous swing low. So this is what we call actually the flip entry model where we have demand now turn supply. As you can see, this is a demand zone and then price reacted within the demand zone and then pushed price to the upside. But then price then pushed to the downside and then took out the demand zone, took out the swing low points that sponsored this move to the upside that broke structure here. So you can see demand turn supply. So for this market condition, you would see what we have here is actually a break in market structure. So we actually want to see the market grab liquidity or what we also call the inducement before we can consider our entry points. So you can see when price drop to the downside, price push to the upside. And then we have the supply zone created and then price drop to the downside and then took out the swing low. Now, what we have here is not a grab of liquidity as I've actually explained with the chalk entry model. So you can do well to check the chalk entry model so that you would also understand further what I'll be teaching in this video. So you would now see that price returned to the upside, now raided the supply zone. 
because price would take this supply zone as a inducement zone because what we have here is not a graph of liquidity but a break in market structure so you see price pushed to the upside and then took out this inducement and then you can now see that what price falls to the downside so we do not have a graph of what liquidity here so what we are expecting is to see price return to a lower time frame sponsorship can do here mitigate the lower time frame sponsorship can do and then we have the fall to the downside so let's look at the example where price drops liquidity what we are to be anticipating and then take our entry based on the grab of liquidity entry models now you can see this is the condition where what we have actually here is the grab of what's liquidity and then price mitigates the higher time frame structure so you would see that price pushed to the upside this is our higher high points price dropped to the downside took out the inducements created the higher low points and then we can see that price pushed to the upside and then took out this high point by dropping the word liquidity so what we have here is not actually the break of structure we just have the sweep of this high with a candle wick so you would see that now price mitigated the higher time frame point of interest because this is actually our lower time frame market structure so you can see once price grab this structure high swept the structure high you would see price return to the downside into this demand zone and then you can see we have the return of price and then price created a supply zone and then push price to the downside and then you can see that price took out this structure low points here so we have the graph of liquidity here we have the graph of liquidity here and then we have price fall to the downside reacted at this demand and then we see price push to the upside and then we have the movement to the downside that took out the previous structure low points that actually sponsored the move to the upside that grabbed this external liquidity so since what we have here is the sweep of liquidity what we are expecting is to see the return of price into the supply zone and then we have price push to the downside but in the condition where we have a break of structure here and then price pushed to the downside reacted at any form of sponsorship can do here within the lower time frame and then gave us this movement to the upside that created our supply zone and then once price dropped to the downside and then breaks the previous structure low points what we are expecting is the return of price to the upside to rate the supply high points and then we see the fall of price to the downside because i've earlier stated in previous videos that what the market actually does is price move to grab liquidity fuel inefficiency so you would see that price needs to sweep liquidity grab inducement before price move in the intended words direction so this is the condition of a flip entry model without inducement so let's check for the example so that you would understand the flip entry models and hey guys if you're really gaining value from this particular video please kindly like share and subscribe to our youtube channel if you're new to this youtube channel so let's check more chart examples before we head to the real-time charts to actually understand how to look out for these entry models so let's look at this market condition where we are in actually where we are actually in a bullish market directional bias so you can see here we have a higher time frame point of interest here so you would see just the way i've explained with actually the sell model so this is actually the buy model so you would see that the lower time frame is actually creating a sell structure to come mitigate the higher time frame point of interest which is actually the higher time frame demand zone so you would see once we have a break of structure here price push to the upside you can see price reacted as this supply zone and then we have the return to the downside but yet price pushed further to the upside and then swept this high points so once we have the sweep of this high points we would realize that what we actually have here is a break in market structure so what we are expecting is for the market or the institutions to regard this place as a liquidity zone to regard this swing low as a liquidity zone though we have another block resting here but what we are going to see is that price will push to the upside price return price push to the upside and then took out 
the previous structure high points. So we want to see price return to the downside, rate this swing low, mitigate the lower time frame demand zone resting below this demand zone. And then we have what price push to the upside. Because what we have here is not the grab of liquidity. It's actually a break in market structure. So meaning the market has not yet grabbed any form of liquidity. The market has not yet rated any form of inducements. So we want to see the market rate this as an inducement because this is the pullback created before the push to the upside that swept the previous words, high points. So let's look at the condition where we have the sweep of liquidity or what we call the grab of liquidity and then the market moves towards the opposite direction. Now you can see in this condition, what we actually have here is the sweep of this low point, not the break of the low points. So this is not a break in market structure, but the sweep of the low. This is actually a stomp hunt. Price actually pushed to the downside and then raided this swing low point. And then we have price pushed to the upside, reacted at this supply zone, and then we have the market push to the downside, created this demand zone here. And then we have the push to the upside that broke the previous swing high points. So what we are going to be expecting is to see price return to the downside to react within this demand. And then we see price push to the upside. Because the market have already grabbed all form of what liquidity resting here. All form of retail stock orders resting here mitigated the higher time frame POI, pushed to the upside, reacted at the supply zone, and then price created a demand zone and then sponsored the move to the upside that broke the structure points. So this is actually like the chalk entry model. But for the chalk entry model, we have the market mitigates the higher time frame points of interest, push to the upside and rate the previous swing high or low, depending on the market condition. But for the flip entry model, we would see price react at the previous swing high or low and then creates a movement in the opposite direction before creating another swing point that would lead markets to the opposite direction and then sweeps the previous structure points. So you can see for the flip entry model, we have supply turn demand and then we have demand turn supply depending on the market condition. What we have for the chalk entry model is when we have our market coming to the downside, what you will see is once price mitigate the higher time frame point of interest, we have this push to the upside. You'll see we have what a change in market character. But for the flip entry model, you would see price drop into the downside, and then you would see price mitigate the higher time frame point of interest, react at this supply zone, create this pullback, create a demand zone, and then we see price push to the upside to sweep the previous structure high points so this is what we are going to be seeing in the charts when we are looking at real-time chart examples so for you to better understand the difference between the chalk entry model and the flip entry model then you would do well to actually go back and watch the chalk entry model video the link to the video is actually in the description section of this video so let's look at a candlestick example before we head to the real-time chart example to look out for entry models in the financial markets. So let's look at this candlestick example. So you can see for the entry model, for the flip entry model with inducements, you can see we have market breaking structure to the upside here. And then price mitigated the higher time frame point of interest. You can see we have our demand zone here. Price dropped to the downside, reacted within this demand zone. Price pushed to the upside, created our supply zone. Because you can see, once price reacted within this demand zone, price created this swing high point and then dropped to the downside and then price created our change in market's character here. So you can see we have our change in market's character here. So, once price created our change in market character, what we actually have here is a break in market structure. So we want to see price rate this swing high, getting this swing high as our inducement high points. So you can see price drops to the downside, return, rate this high point, 
mitigate the extreme supply instead of this supply zone. Because you can see we do not have a grab of liquidity. What we have is a break in market structure. So price mitigates the higher time frame POI, dropped to the demand zone, reacted at the demand zone. You can see demand turn supply. The supply broke the demand zone, created a change in market character. So this supply zone becomes our inducement high points. So price return into the extreme supply before falling to the downside. But you can see for this condition where we have the flip entry model without inducement is when we see price mitigates the higher time frame point of interest by sweeping the high point of the previous structure points. Now you can see we have our demand zone resting here. Once price swept this high point with this week, with this candle week, you can see we have a grab of liquidity. The institutions have grabbed all form of retail orders resting here. So we see price drop to the downside, react at this demand zone. Now price created this swing high. Now we have demand ton supply. We have grab of liquidity here already. So what we should be anticipating is price reacting at this supply zone. But we can also see price can move to the upside, react at this extreme POI. The market will do whatsoever it wants to do. But this also can be considered as a decisional point of interest to put into consideration because we already have price here, grab liquidity, price drop to the downside, create this high point, and then price broke structure to the downside, creating a change in market character. So price can react to this supply and fall to the downside. This becomes our decisional POI. This becomes our extreme POI. Let's head to the charts to look at real-time chart example so that you would understand how to apply the chalk entry model and also the flip entry model in your trade executions. So let's look at this chart example. You can see the market is falling to the downside. We have a change in market character here, but then the market fell to the downside and then we have a break in market structure. Now you can see the market has been creating a form of a range in market here, mitigating any form of sponsorship candle within this range. What we have left here is actually the unmitigated institutional order flow resting here. So when I'm actually analyzing the market, I look out for unmitigated institutional order flow before even considering my order block. So we have this unmitigated institutional order flow resting here. So I would want to mark out the zone. And then you can see then price drop to the downside and then price give us this form of a pullback before the drop to the downside that broke this swing low points. You can see price created an ideal order block here because you can see this movement to the upside swept the high of the scandal and then sponsored the move to the downside that took out this low points. And you can see we have the fair value gap resting here. So we can mark out this order block zone also. So you see we have this order block zone resting here. We have this order block zone. And then we also have the fair value gap resting here. So we have this fair value gap. So we have the imbalance. And then we have the order block. So this suits our ideal institutional order block. We have the grab of this previous candle high points. We have price push to the downside, creates imbalance, and then swept the previous low points so you can see we have this first as the pullback created before price pushed to the downside to break structure here so price transferred inducement from this swing high to actually this swing high so we do not have a valid lower low points here because price have not pushed to the outside to sweep any form of inducements so you can see what we have resting here is actually liquidity resting here so price dropped to the downside again, created this pullback and inducement, drop, created this pullback, inducement. We do not have any rate of inducements. So you can see we have this as a form of trend line liquidity. So we have this as our trend line liquidity because above this, we have our other block zone with the imbalance resting here. And then we have unmitigated institutional order flow zone resting here. So, meaning we have two points of interest. We have the extreme point of interest, which is the order flow zone. And then we have the decisional point of interest, which is actually our order block zone. So, you can see all forms of sponsorship can do here 
have actually been mitigated. So this is where we have our decisional point of interest, and then we have the extreme point of interest resting here. So I would want to play price to see what price is actually going to show us so that we drop to a lower time frame to look out for our entry model. So this is actually the one hour time frame. So our entry would be from the five minutes time frame. So let's play price and see. Now you can see we're having price going to the upside. Price took out this inducement. Price took out the trend line liquidity. Okay. Now you can see that price reacted within the fair value gap. And you can see what we have is price reacted at 50% of the fair value gap resting here. So from the one hour time frame, we could have placed an entry at 50% of the fair value gap and then our stop loss above the other block high points. But then you can see price reacted within the fair value gap and then created this engulfing candle. So you can see price could no longer push to the upside. Price mitigated the fair value gap, the imbalance, and then dropped to the downside, created this engulfing candle. So we can actually take this engulfing candle as our other block zone and then drop to a lower time frame to see how we can possibly take entry from a lower time frame because what you would see here is actually price swept this high point you can see price swept this high point and then you can see price return to the downside and then broke the low points so we can take entry from this particular sponsorship can do at the close of the order block and then put our stop loss above the high of the order block and target the swing low of this market condition so we can now drop to the five minute time frame to also look out for entries to minimize our stop loss so let's drop to the five minute time frame so you can see this is actually our one hour order block zone you can see we have the sweep of this high here in the five minute time frame and then you can see where do we have our order block here so we have this is our order block here this is the last buying candle before the sell move to the downside and then you can see that the order block have been mitigated by this candle so since this candle mitigated the order block and we have fair value gap resting here meaning this becomes our candle to consider since we have this candle resting here and then we have the fair value gap also resting below that particular candle that mitigated our other block within the five minute time frame so within the five minute time frame this is our other block to consider so you can see that what we have is price to cut this high point and then you can see that price dropped to the downside and then we have a change in market character here price broke this low point but before price broke this low point we can see this reaction here so this is actually a flip entry model because you can see demand price reacted here and then price created this supply so we have this supply zone here resting here so you can see that now from the one hour time frame we have placed our entry here but we actually want to minimize our risks so we drop to the five minute time frame to look out for possible entry zones because you can see this is our order block resting here the last buying candle before the sell move to the downside and then you can see that this can do push to the upside mitigated our order block and then drop to the downside we have fair value gap resting here and then you can see price reacted at this demand zone created our supply so this is actually a flip entry model so you would see that we can take our entry from this order block resting here, this supply zone resting here, and also target the one hour swing high. Or since we're taking this from the lower time frame, we can target an unmitigated zone. You can see we have this zone is unmitigated. This zone, we can target this low, target this low, or target this low points since all of these low points are not yet mitigated so but let's target the one hour 
swing low point since we are actually in a bearish market condition so this is our other entry from the five minute time frame but you know actually this zone is not really within the one hour other block zone so we have this entry here let's actually move this to this side so we have this entry here but then we have our ideal zone that is in the five minute time frame within the one hour time frame resting here so we can also have this as our entry points we can put price at we can put our entry at 50 percent of the fair value gap so that we don't miss out from the entry and then our stop loss should be above this swing previous high and then we can now target our one hour swing low as our zone to actually take our profits so let's play price to see what we are actually going to have here so you can see price is dropping to the downside okay wow so you can see price came and then you can see we actually stopped out in this particular entry so price rated our stop loss you can see i actually said that this is not really within the one hour order block zone so there's a possibility of price raiding this and then falling to the downside so let's still play price to see what happens we have this is the entry from the one hour time frame and then this is a minimized entry within the five minutes time frame so let's still play price to see okay so you can see we got stopped out from this entry but then we are actually in this entry and also from the one hour time frame you can see we are in this entry also so price this is our five minute entry and then this is our one hour entry here so you can see we are actually in this particular trade though this one price rated our stop loss so let's play price to see okay so we are still in this trade okay price is still fall into the downside wow so you can see price did not reach our take profit area but you can see that price took out this low point so since we see price took out this low point here yeah, let's take out this since actually this rated our stop loss so we can see price took out this swing low point so we can break even we can move our stop loss to this high points here so we can actually break even in this trade since we've seen price break this low points so meaning we are actually in this trade but if this trade should go against us it's not going to be a bad trade because we've actually broke even so let's play price to see okay price did not reach our take profits area okay let's see price almost it our uh, take profits so let's still play price and see so you can see price is moving to the downside price is moving to the downside upside price is actually ranging price is actually ranging there okay price is heading to the upside so you can see price did not it our uh, take profits so but we are actually saved in this trade because we've moved outwards stop loss since we saw price broke the swing low points here okay so we would now go to the one hour time frame to see what price is actually doing so let's switch to the one hour time frame okay so let's play price okay
So we're actually out of this trade because price have gone against us, though we broke even in this trade. So it's not actually a losing trade. So let's play price and see. Wow. So price returned back into the fair value gap, into the order block zone. So let's play price to see what we can possibly see. Okay. All right. So you can see now price returned again into the fair value gap. Price mitigated the order block zone. You can see price mitigated the order block zone. And look at what we have here. We have this sponsorship candle, this order block to the downside. You can see that price rated the high of this structure point here. You can see price rated the high point. Let's see. So we have price rated this high points here. So meaning we have, you can see we have this engulfing candle. So we also have another order block resting here. This is our order block resting here. We already know that the directional bias of the market is actually what? Bearish. So we can also take entry from the close of this candle. So let's place an entry here so you can see. And then the stop loss above. So we'll be targeting this low point here. So let's push because we want to see price rate that low point. So we'll be targeting the low point there. So we can also drop to the five minute time frame to refine our entry within this order block. So let's drop to the five minute time frame. Though, first, before we drop to the five minute time frame, let me try to pull out this candle so that would actually just mark out the order block zone alone. So we have our order block here. So let's drop to the five minute time frame. So we are actually in the five minute time frame. So here's our five minute time frame here. You can see this is actually our one hour order block zone. You can see we have the sweep of this high point. Now you can see price drop to the downside. We have this pullback. Now price swept this high point here. Price swept this high point here. So you can see we have our order block resting here. So we have our order block resting here. We have a little form of what price imbalance. So we have this order block resting here. This is our entry from the one hour time frame. Now you can also see that now we have price breaks this low point here. You can see the break of this low point here. So price swept this high point. Price dropped to the downside. We see this return serve this high point. So we would want to take our entry from this sponsorship candle. But we can see that we have, this is the last buying move before this sell move coming to the downside. So we have this as our entry zone. We can also consider this as our entry zone since we have this price imbalance here because price have mitigated this order flow. You can see we have this order flow here. Price have mitigated this order flow. You can see the fall to the downside, broke structure, price return mitigated the order flow. So we have actually the order block, but the order flow have already been mitigated. So we can go with this sponsorship candle resting here because this is the last buying candle before the fall to the downside here. So we can place our entry at this candle's close and then we can set our stop loss above this high point here. And then our take profit should be the one hour time frame swing low points. 
so we can take since actually we are in a bearish move so this can be our entry point or we have this entry level also here but you can see just the way i've already stated that this is the buy move to the upside before the sell move that broke structure so the other flow here has already been mitigated already by this return to the upside so let's play price to see what happens or let's still because you can see what we have already is price already took out this high point so price grabbed liquidity already so we do not need price to read any form of inducement and already again price swept this high points so this is actually a valid zone to consider but let's play price to actually see what happens okay wow so you can see price return to our entry to our entry zone so let's continue okay price also have activated the one hour entry zone so let's play price so price is falling to the downside okay so what we can see is price swept this low point here so i can actually move the stop loss from this high to actually the entry level below slightly below the entry level so as to break even in this trade so let's play price okay price is still dropping to the downside we can see that price broke this points here also so let's keep playing price to see what happens the price is returning to the upside price is ranging let's go to the one hour time frame to see so let's play price to see what is happening okay now you can see price return back to the upside so price did not reach our profit area just the way price did not reach our profit area here so i'm just trying to show us how to look out for our what, entry models so let's keep looking at what the market is doing here wow so you can see price return to the upside and then fully into the other block zone and then you can see we have this drop to the downside so let's play price to see what happens more for the wow so you see now we have price breaks the structure here to the downside so you can see now we have our break in market structure here so what are we going to be looking out for now you would see since price broke the structure we have this pullback so this is our inducement zone so this is actually our inducement zone here so this is actually an smt smart money trap because traders will be considering this as the order block that led to the break of the structure but you would see that this is the pullback before the break of structure so this is our inducement zone not actually a valid order block zone except if price creates another form of pullback here then we can consider this as a decisional point of interest but then we now have our what, extreme point of interest resting here then we have this is actually let's see okay so this is the order flow so this is the last buy move before the sell move to the downside so we want to see any price reaction within this order flow zone or the order block zone so let's see what price is going to do so let's play price and see okay now you can see you can see price came reacted at this other block but still yet price what raided the other block so let's play price and see price is now within our other block zone which is our poi zone so 
since we consider this as our smart money trap zone if we actually wanted to take entry from the one hour time frame would have placed we could place our entry here in our stop loss slightly above and then we target the swing low points here so let's play price to see wow wow so you can see price rated this entry you can see we have a rate of our what, stop loss so you can see that trading is a business model of probability but you must be on the higher side of this word probability that is why you must actually seek the knowledge to understand how to interpret price movements in the charts so you can see now price rated words are stop loss so let's keep playing price to see now you would see price came mitigated let's see if price mitigated the iof zone here so you can see what price did was price came into the fair value gap resting around the order flow zone this is a fair value gap here price filled up the fair value gap resting below the order flow zone so if you want to understand more about institutional order flow there's already a video in the youtube channel you can actually go watch that video to actually understand more about institutional order flow so you can now see that what price mitigated the imbalance resting below the order flow zone so let's see what price is set to do all right now we can see something here that price dropped to the downside you can see price took out this high price dropped to the downside and then we have this change in market character here so we are actually following the trend the directional bias so you see we have this change in market character here price took out this high point here so you can see the return to the downside price took out this low point now what you're going to see we have this sponsorship can do resting here this order block resting here because this order block rated this high points we have sweep upwards liquidity price took out the high of this candle so this is a valid word order block so we can actually mark out this order block here as our zone to consider for entry so we can actually now drop to the one hour time frame to actually see how we can take entry from this order block zone so let's drop to the five minute time frame now you would see that this is actually our order block zone from the one hour time frame within our five minutes time frame now you see price broke the structure price return pull back to cut this high points here to cut this high points here so we have this as our order block also this is within the one hour time frame order block so we have our order block resting here and then we have this is the last buying move before the sell move to the downside so meaning this is actually the order flow so this is the order flow here so this is the order flow the last buying move before the sell move to the downside so you can see that now price broke structure here you see we have our inducement resting here so we have inducements here but yet price pushed to the downside created this inducement so since this is actually the one hour time frame zone so we can place our entry here at the order flow zone within this five minute time frame and then our stop loss above though we have this fair value gap so we can set it within the 50 percent of the fair value gap since the fair value gap is within the zone of the order flow so we'll project the one hour swing low as our take profits zone area we 
So we're going to be targeting this swing low. So let's drop back to the five minute time frame. So you can see first, let me return to the one hour because I actually spotted something. I just noticed something from the one hour time frame. You can see we have the fair value gap here. We have this fair value gap here. So let's drop to the five minute time frame. So from the five minute time frame, you can see we have a break of structure here, price drop down. We have change in market character. We have uh, inducement resting here. We have our inducement resting here. Price drop pull back. We still have this inducement resting here. So this are actually a lot of noise, but we can consider this deeper pullback as our inducement. Expecting price to come read the inducement and then drop to the downside. But we can see also that we can actually take more entries within this lower time frame structure. Since we see price give this pullback, return, give this inducement, we can also take entry at this other block and then we got this swing low for a take profit zone. Let's try that and actually see what happens. So we can place an entry here, stop loss above, and then let's target this unmitigated zone here. Since we are seeing that what price from the five minute price drop to the downside, give us these inducements here. Because to cut this low, this is the inducement, the pullback before the break of the structure. So let's play price to see. Okay, we have price pushing to the upside. Okay. Or oh, price push to the downside. So price didn't activate this anyway. So let's pull it out. So let's play price to see. So you can see within the five minute time frame, you can see price read at this inducement, drop to the downside. Price again created this inducement. Price is reading the inducement. We could possibly see any reaction of price around possibly this zone here. Let's play price and see. So let's see. Okay. Okay. The market is now pushing to the upside. Let's see if price is going to return to our entry zone. So what we are going to be seeing again is, so since we've already marked out the one hour, let's actually go to the one hour time frame. So from the one hour time frame, we have the fair value gap zone and then we actually have our other block here. So let's see, let's drop to the five minutes. Let's see what really is going to happen. Sorry, let me drop, let's go to the one hour. Let's see the structure in the one hour time frame. So you can see, okay, price drop, pull back, and then drop to the downside. So you see price took out this low point. So you see we have our inducements here from the one hour. You can see this is our inducement from the one hour. Yeah, these are inducements. Price have read the inducements. Let's drop to the five minute time frame. So this is actually our inducement zone here. So let's play price to see. Price have not reacted within the one hour fair value gap, which actually you can see here we have already mitigation. This is just the zone left. Let's see if that is where actually price returned to. So you can see price returned to that level because you can see in the five minute time frame. Within the fair value gap, this is what is there. Price mitigated it, but then price created this other block that dropped to the downside, created fair value gap here. You can see price mitigating it here. So, we have the tendency of taking an entry here. Since we see that this candle went to the outside, took out this high, but then closed below it. So, at the close of this candle, you can take your entry at the close and then target this low point resting here or this low point so let's play price to see okay anyway price went back to the upside because we are dealing with the higher time frame point of interest 
So you can see why at times you get stopped out from the lower time frame. So you have to always keep in mind the higher time frame point of interest. Even if within the lower time frame you're seeing several words, points of interest or other blocks. So let's see prices gain to return to our entry. This is where we have our entry here. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Let me see. So you can see price left us without really activating the trade entry. Let's keep playing price to see. Okay, price is dropping to the downside. Okay, price is going to the upside. So let's see. Let's go to the one hour time frame. Okay, so we can see that price actually reached our take profits area. So guys, this is actually what you need to be looking out for. Though you see we had entries, we had this one missed and everything. So it's just to show you guys how to look out for your entry models. So I'm actually going to do further videos regarding entry models and then post. But for now, go with this. Backtest your chart. Try and see these things playing out. Implement it in your chart. So this should be the end of this module. So to meet again, guys, please kindly like this video, share and subscribe to this YouTube channel if you're new to this YouTube channel. Cheers and God bless.